What I, what I wanted to, to play you, JD, yep. is uh, Nigel Cecil. So I played this in the drama show, but you, do, you don't listen to that. You just, uh, no, um, it's the musical bits you listen to on the, ra- on, on the yes, car radio. Yes, I, I can't listen to things but you in can't the car. Listen to the, the talking. The talking bit, because it d- distracts me a little bit. Yeah, well, I can, yeah, un- I can, un- ex- I can understand... I can so, understand that. Yeah. Um, he, what what it is though, it sort of crosses over into what this show is about. I think. Right. Um, because we'll explain what the show is all about. Well, a lot of people don't know. Well, the drama show sort mm. of started out just telling. Well, the the, the storyteller is mm. a, tells stories. <laughs> yes. That's what he does. Yes. Does he really? Um, oh, right. Okay. But <laughs> when I've I'm got s- that, I've been sitting in for the storyteller for a yeah. while now. Right. And I've tr- I'm trying to, to develop it into more like a a music show in the sense of having clips, because right. I can't I can't tell stories. I'm not a, a drama. Well, I'm I'm becoming a dramatist. Right. I can talk about the plays that I'm writing. Right. But I'm mostly writing them because I'm prepared to uh, rewrite what I what little I've written of the show of the plays mm-hmm. to fit into a radio format. Right. My pro- my problem is that the the people who have plays have yeah. written them for forty minutes or two hours or however long they've written them, right. and they want them to be that length. Right. So if you say to them, "Well, I'd like a three minute clip to go yes. between s- a couple of tunes," right, they don't know what you're talking about. No, no. It doesn't make any sense at all to a, a proper scriptwriter or dramatist. No, probably um, not the listener as well. Well, I don't. No, I think the listeners. Well, I'm not sure who the listeners are. <laughs> I mean, the phon- the phonic listeners are expecting music, aren't they? Well, I I think the, in the way phonic FM because the way it's placed, it's yes. anything really. It's in it a could building. Do, could do anything. It's a building which um, has so many different performances. The, you're talking about the Phoenix building. Yeah, the Phoenix. Yes. yes. Where phonic is based, I said, which is in the Phoenix. Oh yes, we are in the Phoenix. Right. Yes. So yes, we definitely are. Um, and so lots of things happen here. Yes. From plays to to musicals or whatever. So oh yes, if we if we just said we're a general purpose arts radio, mm-hmm. we're based in the Phoenix and we reflect whatever's mm. going on or nearby, mm. Mm. then we could do a very wide range of stuff. But I think mostly people expect music. Yes, so they do. yes, probably local music or you know bands which which yes. you've never heard of. So it's like a. Um, it's not the stuff which is you know in the top forty or whatever. No, oh no. It's some, it's well, some of it yes, might be. Some of it might be, but in in a in a roundabout way. But new music, should we say? But at the uh, the same time, I don't think radio formats are are, are, are that that bad a thing. So I don't see why drama, mm. in a general sense, can't follow the same pattern. What so drama with music? Well, the pattern of so, um, sampling or remix or extracts or reworking. Mm-hmm. And that's why comedy interest, interests me, mm-hmm. because it's somewhere in between. Mm-hmm. So most, most comedians are prepared to do... They'll appear as on, on a chat show and they'll, they'll, they'll tell their story mm-hmm. or represent ro- what they're interested in mm-hmm. over five minutes or seven minutes or three mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. But if you went to their evening performance, mm-hmm. it, it might take 40 minutes to cover the same sort of topic. Yes. Whereas a, a, a play is mm. written to be three quarters of an hour, then an interval, then another three quarters of an hour, mm-hmm. let's say. So if you say to them, well, give us a 10 minute sample of it mm. and we'll put several of those into mm. a, an hour's radio. It does, I, I, and perhaps, it do, perhaps there are places where that does make sense. Well, it's a, it's a different form of listening, isn't it? When you listen to a play on the radio... Yes. ...of what you have to describe... Yes. ...is much more and then sitting in, in, in a theatre. So that's... I think that's where it's different, in yes. a way, is that when you describe something, you have to describe the scene as as well as what's happening. Yes. I'm not, I, I think it's, a, it's great people go to, go to the... Yeah. Go to the theatre. Yes. I'm just um, trying to describe how a drama show might be, because mm-hmm. um, we play tracks ahead of the Phonic Fest, which is on Saturday, by the way. Yes. You can save two pounds by buying a ticket in advance. Yes. I should mention that. Yes. Twelve pounds on the door. Ten pounds in advance. Right. But anyway, look, I want to play you this clip, JD, because okay. 
Uh, it's now quarter past. Yes. There's a strong chance Chris will be here by half past. Right. So I want to play you the clip, and then I'd like your thoughts about it, because it, it, it covers not only artificial intelligence, but also the 80s and mm. the synthesizer. So just just have a, have a, oh no, just have a listen to this. So, calling things out as you like it especially for his fair-minded friends. Hello, Chakabouties. Nigel Cecil here once again, entertainment entrepreneur, and Hilary has reminded moi that I am now supposed to be coming to conclusions about artificial intelligence. Now, if we start from the beginning, or try to, artificial intelligence, well, its meaning is that jobs that could have been done by the intelligence of humans, live intelligence, can now be replaced by computers and robots and images. And in fact, in the visual arts, it, it means that uh, artists, creatives, uh, script writers, performers may be replaced by artificial intelligence. And that could lead to a loss of work and in fact, undermining the whole concept of creativity by live persons. So this video is looking at our conclusions, having spoke with my fair-minded and equitable friends, as where we see the future. And there's three parts. I think there's three parts, Hilary. Yes, there's first of all, lessons to be learnt. And have they been learnt? And then, uh, what, a trade union like equity, like equity, equity, the trade union for actors, variety, entertainers, and other creators across the United Kingdom, what they think. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, to see what Sam says and hopefully then come to a conclusion. And a friendly challenge to the Equity General Secretary, Paul Fleming. But now it's part one, lessons to be learnt. Have a look at this. A video countdown clock there, counting down the arrival of a new threat to creatives. In 1980, there was still a trade union closed shop, so it was important that any creatives were members of trade unions. But the arrival of the synthesizer, well, that was going to threaten the work opportunities of musicians everywhere because synthesizers could replace them. But indeed, some members of equity, well, they produced a record, and this is what the record sounded like, all synthesized. <laughs> The small record company at the time, uh, compared with the, the major conglomerates, paid for Mike Mansfield, a top video TV producer at that time, who, who'd worked with all sorts of uh, stars like Mark Bolan. Well, you could carry on naming them, couldn't you, Hillary? Well, the video was made and everybody thought, well, you've got to check. You have to check with the Musicians' Union. And so these equity members approached the Musicians' Union and said, May we join? We've produced this synthesized record, totally synthesized. And the MU said, no, because we don't recognize synthesized players as musicians. So you can't join the MU as synthesized players. So having discussed it with equity, they said, well, it's a performance. You're covered by your equity membership, surely, surely. <laughs> and so the video was offered to, I believe it was Central Television, for a network presentation premiere on a Saturday morning children's programme. <laughs> like this. And what happened? Well, apparently the record company received a phone call to say, sorry, your video has been banned 
because you're not members of the MU, you're performers. And they said, yes, but they were told they couldn't join the MU. Well, that's a problem for you, not a problem for us. So effectively, it appeared that synthesized players were not regarded as musicians. And that was then. And we're now in now. And where does it leave us now? Well, of course, the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in 2012 featured Sir Simon Rattle conducting the London Symphony Orchestra and Rowan Atkinson, CBE, as Mr Bean playing, guess what? The synthesizer. So did synthesizers put musicians out of work? Indeed, there are more live performances now with musicians than ever before. And the synthesizer has been incorporated. And the key word is live. Bear that in mind as we come to our conclusion. Key word is live. So with that, shall we move on to equity? Yes, <laughs> let's move on. But don't forget, it happened then. <laughs> Yes, what, hello. What do you make of that? I'm rather posh. Rather posh, rather yes. Rather posh. Rather refined I mean, voice. I mean to say, you know that um, we have to upgrade <laughs> Phonic <laughs> FM. Oh, yes, I think Phonic <laughs> FM will Quality to controller yes. needs to come down and talk to us about it. Well, <laughs> yes. yes. It's no, funny, it's proper, very proper, funny, I must well, admit. You yes. know, even though they're trying to talk about something serious. Well, it was a serious topic. But yes, it was, but it's um, just the voice. Is, you know, yes, <laughs> yes. But do you remember the synthesizer sound? Oh yes, definitely, yes. As it was yesterday. And do you think it was an, an improvement on what was going on bef before that? Um, well, I don't know, really. You can listen to a certain radio um, station and get, the, get that voice out, no problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I won't, won't mention who, but you know, it's, a, it's there, so... No, I was thinking about the synthesizer. Oh, the synthesizer. When the synthesizer came in in the 80s, yeah. Did, what did it contribute to the music? Uh, no. No, <laughs> you didn't. You didn't really. It did it for sound effects, right? But not for music. Oh. I think it's it's a takeover from using a piano. That's the trouble. And the piano was, you know, the, the thing, yeah, the musical true. instrument. And so you come across this electronic thing, which <laughs> completely weird sound. Yes, yeah, so uh, that okay. That's that's still only that's still what you think. Yeah, I it's think just, so. It's just a bit weird. It's just a bit weird. And um, you, where do you think Chris is now? Um, that's a good question. The, the the phone is telling me something wrong here. Ah, oh. <laughs> it, it could be anywhere between here and Timbuktu. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then, artificial intelligence. Last yeah. week we thought we could take your eighties shows. Yes feed them into a computer yes and the computer would do several other ones yes they do, you, do you think that's possibly right well, it's, anything's possible but it's um, whether or not it's real how would the audience know it wasn't real well the programs I've done are real yeah, that's what you claim well I do I do claim and they, they are real because they're played again that's true so if, if you try and record something yes and it, uh, tomorrow it could be completely out of date. Whereas they're still playing 80s on 80s programmes on 80s radio stations. That's true. Yes, so so if you put something weird on, like this... The, the, remember the days of the electronic music? Yes. Well, that, that was very weird as well, and that didn't take off. Ah. So now you can listen to uh, any radio station, they will play a track from the 80s, and there's no problem attached to it. People remember it. And even young people of today are connected to that sort of music as well. But all, what I'm getting at, J.D., is if, if, um, if you listen to, to uh, a lot of radio, mm. you might think this, um, this playlist, if I'm going to use the word playlist, the sequence of music... Mm. has been worked out by 
would it would it have been a computer or is, is it a, a choice being made or could the computer do do a similar job well um, as a as a top DJ, mm, which you are, you're from the you're 80s, the top DJ. Yes, where you didn't have that technology at all. No, no. So you had to use what was around, like turntables. Yes. And uh, cassette machines. Yes. And those things, and sp- and uh, spool machines as well. Yes. Spool tape machines. So um, it's totally different way of broadcasting today as it was before it's actually much easier to broadcast now than it did should we say back in the 80s yes 